Can you really create and ship a complete full stack app in just a few minutes using GitHub Spark? I'll show you in this video. Then you'll know whether it's worth the not so cheap subscription for GitHub's brand new AI service. I had it build several apps and I'll tell you what works great with GitHub Spark and what maybe doesn't work so well. We run through every core feature, create and wire a real backend and try pushing a full stack build all the way to a public deployment. Let's go. GitHub Spark is a product, a service from GitHub, that after a long beta is finally publicly available. GitHub promises it makes it super easy to go from an idea, basically a prompt, to a deployed full stack web app with a single click. And we've heard claims like that quite a bit lately. But when GitHub releases something like this, I personally find it especially interesting. Because GitHub is a hugely well-known and widely used brand, not some fancy startup. For developers who might be hesitant to use new tools from companies they don't know, a product from GitHub might feel more familiar. On the landing page it looks interesting at least. We see a prompt area, a kind of IDE and a preview. It doesn't look like the familiar we scope though, but rather a completely new web tool and GitHub writes exactly that here, an all-in-one AI-powered platform for building intelligent apps, no setup, no steep learning curve. And also, Spark lets you create full-stack applications with built-in AI, blah blah blah, use it to prototype features, test ideas with real users, or launch open-source projects. Cool, let's do it. The whole thing does cost money though. You need to be a Copilot Pro Plus user to use Spark. That's not exactly cheap, it costs $39 a month. Let's see whether it's worth it and whether this subscription makes sense for you too. Up to now, I haven't had Copilot Pro Plus, only Copilot, so I have to upgrade. And yeah, this does look fairly familiar if you've used Copilot in the browser. I'll just say hi. Okay, that didn't work, so it's apparently not meant to be a chatbot. Let's try a proper prompt. We need an app idea. Recently, I wanted to link from my old Instagram profile to a small website that kind of like Linktree, but more for developers, links to my personal website, my GitHub account, this YouTube channel, and so on. So let's build a little software as a service project for developers, similar to Linktree, but focused on developer portfolios. Users should be able to create a profile that includes their GitHub account, social media links, and personal websites. Implement it as a modern web app, React and Tailwind for the frontend, Node.js Express for the backend, SQLite, Prisma for the database. Add an authentication mechanism via GitHub and a clean, minimal UI with a developer-focused style. And go. Now the UI changes and it looks more like the screenshots on the landing page. The AI is now building my Spark. One Spark is basically one project here. And it calls the project DevLink Portfolio Hub. Well, good enough, I'd say. You can see it creating files and also telling me a bit about what it's doing. It reminds me of GitHub Copilot in agent mode. Here it talks about implementing a mocked backend because a Spark environment can only do frontends, okay? Too bad, I actually wanted a backend as well. And GitHub does say you can build full stack applications with it. Let's see. We'll fast forward a bit. GitHub Spark has now been working for six minutes and yeah, the result definitely looks pretty cool. A nice simple landing page, there are a few demo profiles for various fictional people and yeah, that's in line with what I had in mind. A short bio page with a few links and neat icons. Cool. Are we done? Not quite. Although GitHub Spark has made a solid start here, for example, you can already see what a function for adding links looks like, you quickly notice it's still lacking a bit in logic and a backend with persistence. Nothing happens under this continue with GitHub button. But that makes sense, only these five files were created, a small React app. Let's look at what options GitHub Spark offers here now. On the left there is the Iterate tab, with suggestions for the next prompt. Overall, it strongly resembles GitHub Copilot's agent mode in VS Code. Then up here we also have a Theme tab. That's new. The AI apparently created a custom theme for us, which I quite like, but there are other themes available next to it. I'll try Neo Brutalism. Nah, I don't really like it. And now I can't get back to the custom theme. I'll try the Iterate tab and click Restore. but. No, nothing happens. Maybe that's still teething trouble. Looks like I can't get back to the preview state. That said, as soon as you create a repository from the project, you can see the individual changes as commits. Later I realized I can in fact revert individual changes like this theme change. Still, if you offer a UI like this, it should enable that in my opinion. Anyway, for now, we'll go with a different theme. The third tab is called data, and that's interesting. It looks like there's a way to store data. Some level of persistence seems to work. The three demo users are also stored here. And there's a current user value, which is interesting. It kind of sounds like it has laid the groundwork for some sort of session, however, it shouldn't be saving a single current user for everyone, that 
be impractical. But anyway, let's see. There also is a prompts tab. Apparently, you can see here when the app you've created has AI functionality of its own. We don't have that at the moment and we also don't have any assets yet. But that sounds useful too if you want to use your own files like logos or similar. Otherwise, instead of the preview, we can also click through the code here. Very simplified IDE basically. And looking at our little React app, everything feels familiar. The usual boilerplate. We have a style sheet and... Yeah, a verbose readme. Up here on the right, there's a tool for editing elements on the current page. Let's try it and ask for a fancier icon. Altogether, this gives a good picture of what GitHub Sparks wants to be. We can define themes, upload files, including graphics. We can visually select and edit elements, especially if you care about quickly creating a good look for a prototype, GitHub Sparks might score here, because it's obviously easier to mark elements in the preview and tell the AI to make visual tweaks than to hunt through the code. And it worked here. We've got a nice new icon. We also see the diff that Spark generated for the new prompt. Here we can see the new icon. That's helpful for understanding the change. What other features do we have? We can open the project in a code space. I won't go into that in this video because it's not directly related to GitHub Spark. GitHub code spaces have of course long allowed you to run VS Code in the browser, in the cloud and execute programs and also use GitHub Copilot. And I see this as complementary to GitHub Spark. When wipe coding doesn't get you any further because that's my impression of Spark. It's about wipe code. I'm not really doing proper development here. I'll do that in the IDE I trust. And that's fine. I can also simply create a repository. And we'll do that here too. And it works smoothly. Anything else would be rather embarrassing for a GitHub product. We see that it's not just the project code, our Spark, but the entire Spark environment. So there are many files related to the Spark environment. But of course, also simply our code that we had to generate. And another thing GitHub Spark enables is publishing. However, not publicly on the web. GitHub Spark only allows publishing behind GitHub authentication, meaning people without a GitHub account won't be able to reach your site. If you want to host your app publicly on the web, you can do that. For example, with Sevala, my partner for this video. Sevala gives you a straightforward, practical platform as a service. You can easily sign up, for example, with your GitHub account and connect your repositories. And for static sites, it's completely free. That means we can take what we just built with GitHub Spark and host it publicly with one click at no cost. You can also enable automatic deployments on every commit, which is really super practical. But of course, Sevala also enables hosting complex applications. For my GitHub Spark, which you'll see later in the video, I subsequently added the backend and the database and was able to deploy it on Sevala with just a few clicks. Simply specify the build process, I had the AI write a Docker file for me and set the required environment variables. And that's how I now have my frontend running on Sevala as well as my backend and my database, which you can manage very easily with the database studio. That makes development and deployment simply fun. And the whole thing runs on a global reliable infrastructure based on Google Kubernetes engine and a worldwide Cloudflare network. Even static sites are delivered that way, globally optimized for speed. As I said, static content is free. For everything else, Sevala has a very transparent, usage-based pricing model with no artificial limits. For example, you can invite unlimited collaborators. You don't pay per seat. You just pay based on what you actually use, and I think that's just fair. And on top of that, you get $50 in free credits to start. So give it a try. I can really recommend it. You'll find the link in the video description. Okay, but let's take a step back. Up until just now, our application was just a good looking front-end code. You're about to find out how well creating the backend worked. We asked GitHub Spark to add a dedicated backend to our application, because right now it's mostly a pretty front-end. It takes a few minutes again, which I'll fast forward a bit. And the result is promising. There are noticeably more changes now and a new backend folder. We see a Prisma SQL database schema. It took my early description into account and created an Express.js backend with a corresponding Prisma schema. And yes, backend logic for things like authentication and routes. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to publish the whole thing via GitHub Spark as well, since shipping is part of the service. Publishing was very fast, but this still doesn't look like a dynamic persistent application to me. I don't think GitHub Spark even adjusted the front-end files. It would be helpful if at the end the AI also told me what it did and what the next steps might be. That's how it works in GitHub Copilot's agent mode, for example. So 
What happened next was a wipe coding session. I asked GitHub Spark to connect the front end and the back end. It took a few tries. You can see this connected batch here. It added that at some point so I could tell whether the database connection worked or not. It also implemented a health check. I asked it to build an onboarding flow, but it was a bit buggy. You couldn't type into the input fields because they were continuously re-rendering. Sometimes after refreshing, I'd get errors where the state suddenly disappeared. And you can see here that my name suddenly vanished. So the usual thing happened with AI or with coding. After one to two prompts you feel almost done. Then you keep iterating and it takes a long time to reach a fully satisfactory result. And we can see these prompts in the git commit history. Every change to the settings like the theme and every prompt is a commit. And you can see it took a few attempts before things sort of worked. At some point I was just pasting error logs and so on. But in the end after one to two hours I did get it to a roughly working state using only AI prompts without writing a single line of code. I hosted it externally and implemented my own GitHub authentication flow. And if you're wondering why GitHub Spark itself enables hosting and GitHub authentication, yes, but in my opinion, it's not for end users. When they open the app for the first time, they see this. GitHub's login dialog that doesn't really engage end users. I want a landing page and from there handle authentication myself. For that I needed an external hosting provider. Which brings me to my takeaway. In which cases GitHub Spark is worth it? Because just for what I did here, probably not. But I tried a few more things and had to create other apps. I think I made a mistake in how I used GitHub Spark. I built a prototype and then immediately wanted to put it live because it looked so cool. But I got a bit lost in that and it turned into pure wipe coding. For a use case Spark isn't really built for, external deployment and so on. And although the app largely works, I don't feel fully confident putting it out publicly, maybe in the future. So for what and for whom does GitHub Spark make sense? Why not just work in VS Code with GitHub Copilot and agent mode? That's much cheaper. Doesn't that get you to the same result? All also, GitHub Spark really takes a long time. It's not for synchronous work. It's more like having an intern, you occasionally tell what to do, and then after 5, 10, 15 minutes, you check in to see where things stand. I think Spark's advantage is prototyping an app with a front end. You really do get a great result quickly. If you have one specific idea for a web project in mind, then in my view, this isn't really for you, unless you can't program at all and want more comfort features. But if you're a developer, Spark is worth it when you often have ideas you want to see quickly. Something you can show to a client or potential users. The first result is genuinely impressive. For example, I generated a habit tracker in the GitHub style pretty quickly. You can quickly set the right theme, edit elements, or if you have to, slap in a client's logo. That can already be impressive and could save you a lot of time. It also gives you demo data right away. And crucially, you get very fast access to AI features. I mentioned that earlier, but didn't use it in my app. If you want to quickly build an app with AI functionality, it's super easy. You don't have to create access tokens with AI providers and wire them up somehow. You can do it quickly in GitHub Spark via prompt. For example, check this out. I generated an app where you enter ingredients you have in the fridge and the AI suggests recipes. And there's also a shopping list feature. That really was the result of just a few minutes of work. And you have it running on the web. Is it perfect? No. Does it enable a first impression? Yes. Can I or a few better tester try it out for a few days? Yes. Or if you occasionally want to write a tool just for yourself, that's interesting too. Then the GitHub login page doesn't bother you. I did it as well. To get you click on a YouTube video like this one, you need a good title. I often have an idea and discuss it with ChatGPT, but I've often thought it would be clearer if I could edit titles in a list. So I built it here with AI functionality. I can manually add ideas for video titles and I also integrated multiple AI functions that suggest more options and rate existing ones. And it shows me when a title is getting too long, etc. For things like that, GitHub Spark is really awesome. And to be fair, GitHub basically says the same, tucked away at the bottom of the landing page. Use it to prototype features, test ideas with real users or launch open source projects. Turn spreadsheets into interactive apps, build internal tools or create smart helpers for everyday life. So I don't think their intent is that you ship perfect products with it. For that, sooner or later, you'll have to leave the Spark interface and continue developing yourself, take care of deployment and so on.
You probably can't host a professional app behind the GitHub login. I also sometimes felt during testing that the server needed a warm-up, sometimes data or CSS briefly disappeared and you had to refresh. But for testing ideas and internal use, it can be super helpful. And we should also say the GitHub Pro Plus subscription doesn't just include Spark. You also get access to significantly better language models for coding, which might be interesting for you. So tell me in the comments what your opinion is on GitHub Spark or similar products. I'd also really appreciate a like and a subscription. It helps me a lot to keep making videos like this. See you next time.